G'day everyone and welcome back to the Fix It Fingers workshop. This is my router sled and it's very handy. You can use it backwards and forwards, side to side, to turn thin wood into very thin wood. And it's great, down to about maybe four, five millimeters. After that, it's a bit too aggressive and you risk shattering the very thin veneers that you are trying to get nice and consistent. To go below that, I need to turn this, with the aid of some sandpaper and a PVC pipe, into a DIY drum sander. At least that's the plan. How we go about that, well, I don't really know. We're gonna make it up as we go along. Because when you have stuff like this delicate little beauty, I don't wanna hit it with Kevin the random orbital sander, because there's a good chance that I'm gonna tear some chunks off, and it will take too long. Let's see if this can help me out. So the first thing we need to do is just cut this piece of PVC pipe into half. You can do this with any of your woodworking tools. Find a hole saw that is approximately the right size. This one is just a tiny bit under, which is pretty much perfect for my needs. When you're using the hole saw, you'll get a cleaner result if you come in from both sides. So as soon as the drill bit has pierced through the bottom, flip it over and cut out these little wheels, which will act as the plugs for my two sandpaper rollers. Now, they're pretty good, but there's a bit of a burr right in the middle, so I'm gonna chuck those up in the drill. Grab a piece of sandpaper and level those off slightly. I want them to be pretty square, although they do not have to be absolutely perfect. This is a pretty rough and ready jig. It's not exactly gonna win any design awards. So I was trying to use my sled as a bench hook and my neighbor took pity on me and gifted me this three and a half inch Craftsman vise. Unlike my other vise, this one actually works and God, it made my life so much easier for this project. The aluminium pipe I'm using is 12 millimeters or half an inch. So that's what I had to drill my wheels out to. Effectively, this pipe is gonna be the bushing. So I roughed up the outside of it with some sandpaper, try and help the super glue to stick. And hammered those little bits of metal in so that hopefully these rollers last a while. Those furniture bolts I stole off the side of the road and they're gonna be the axles. I didn't have anything long enough to be a full solid axle. So I'm gonna have to use two, one from each end. Not ideal, but again, this is a pretty rubbish jig. Filed down the aluminium and they'll be the freewheeling end of the jig. The drive end needs a way for my drill to turn the wheels. So I'm going to use T-bolts just because that's what I happen to have lying around. But any non-round bolt should work. A bit of dodgy dodgy chisel action to mortise out the appropriate slot for the T-head. And I didn't want to glue them in at this stage. They sat a tiny bit proud, so using the pressure of this little MDF cap, I'm able to hold those in position. And there's my drive wheel, pretty much complete. However, it's a tiny bit loose inside that pipe. That was on purpose, because the plan was to use electrical tape as a gasket. Best thing about this is you can just apply as much as you need, test, still a bit loose, add some more, until you get a nice tight fit. No glue or anything here, literally using the friction of that tape to hold it in and trying to keep the bolt as square as possible. So when you chuck it up in your drill, which is gonna power this contraption, it runs relatively true. Could adjust this just by using the hammer to give it a few taps. That's about as fussy as I was going to get. That wasn't too bad. Now it was time to drill the mounting holes in the actual router sled. And again, these are going to be held in place with T-bolts, so I had to chisel away a little piece of the sled. Now 
Next up were the plates that will hold the drum to the sled. One down the bottle from the mount and those two upper holes are going to be connected in order to form a slot. I did this on the router table though there are many different ways that you could do it. Do be careful when doing these plunge cuts on the router table, it can be a little bit hairy. As long as these were the same length I was going to be happy, they don't have to be super clean. I probably didn't really need a guide bushing down the bottom, but I made one anyway. Same procedure, drill out, ream the hole, sandpaper everything for a bit of grip on the glue, and then tap in those bushings. And file them down flush. More sandpaper action to rough up the surface of my PVC pipe. I only had scraps of sheet sandpaper lying around. There's probably a lot better ways of doing this. Mine was really just cobbled together with whatever I had. If I ever made another one, this would be one of the many areas for improvement. Elastic bands to hold it down while the glue dried, and I even ended up making two. The yellow one is 60 grit, and the white one is 180 grit. Assembly time. Inside my T-bolts to hold the wooden guides. That slot now allows the height adjustment with the little handles. Another little MDF holder to put the static axle in place. Slide on my drum, feed it through that guide bushing and a second handle to adjust the height on the drill side. And that's kind of how it's meant to work. Now for very thin pieces, I'm going to have to attach those to a sled to feed them through. So there is a second piece of form ply underneath. And I'm lowering my drum and trying to get it nice and even to run the first test. Where I figured out, that's the wrong way to do it. But it was fun. We're going to be feeding in the other way. Right. She's set up. I've got a couple of clamps giving it some angle. And I'm not terribly hopeful, to be completely honest. I'm not entirely sure that this is going to work. However, it only has to do one job, and we'll call it a success, at least for the Rubbish Wood 21. If it goes any better than that, that's a bonus. Let's hope the sandpaper doesn't fly off. So I've used the super glue trick to attach that thin piece of pine bed slat, an offcut from my sandpaper testing. For the inaugural run, that wasn't probably high enough there, it was only just touching, I could even feed it through backwards which wasn't terribly clever. Adjusting the height on one end, and we had success. I was getting a nice steady stream of sawdust coming off. A tiny clamp allowed me to control speed, this was all a learning process. And running this test piece through, not only did I find that getting the parallelness of the drum tricky due to its slightly crappy nature, it also had quite a bit of snipe. But this, I sort of accepted it was going to be part of it. Because it was kind of loose in those bushings, the bolts don't fit in perfectly, it was advantageous to me to have the workpiece as it feeds in effectively stabilize the drum. So it's going to heavy snipe right on the leading edge, but then that pressure upwards allows for a more even run over the surface of the workpiece. Holy crap, it worked. Kind of. Obviously not a fine piece of engineering, but if you can do my one project, then it's done its job. Let's run the real thing through. And here is the blue tape trick for anyone unfamiliar. Stick it down on both sides, beat a super glue in the middle, and this worked really, really well. And it also meant I could actually use the slight uh, unevenness of the height of the jig to my advantage. The left side, or top side as you're facing, will be slightly higher. And the side towards the drill, that's getting its little fine adjustments there with the hammer, will be slightly lower. And by reversing the piece, I could actually get an even sand, and if it was too tight at one section, I could move it into the slightly deeper area. And if it wasn't gripping enough, I could move it towards the drill. This was scary for the first time running through my actual workpiece. 
that the high bits, the really dark walnut timber and the really light eucalypt timber there, were the ones I was trying to sand off. If you'd like to see more of why I'm sanding down these oddly shaped veneer pieces stuck together, then check out my actual entry for the Rubbishwood 21 challenge, which were some bookmarks. Link is above. After learning a feel for the tool, getting the speed right, getting the feeds right, and just realizing it wasn't going to shatter my entire piece and was functioning as desired, this was a lot of fun. Obviously, a lot of dust kicking up everywhere. You need the good dust mask on to stop it from going into your lungs. And yes, it's as eccentric as a reclusive billionaire, but it was doing the job, and that was awesome. Once I've taken it most of the way down with the 60 grit roller, it's a few seconds to change that over to the 180 grit roller. And if anything, this one was even less centered than my last one. Really, this is just a prototype, guys. I can envisage a version two where once I have a drill press where I can drill my holes a lot more accurately and obviously do a custom design instead of converting my router sled, that this has a lot of potential to be an actual useful tool for the workshop in a general sanding sense. For now, it is really just a thicknesser. And there are my results. I was able to get down to about a millimeter, millimeter and a half and really even out those pieces of wood. I'd like to thank my channel members as usual. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please do subscribe to Fix It Fingers and I will see you on the next one.